good? Yeah. We're right. recording. So, to start out with, you guys have uh, heat pumps out in spaces, okay? The heat pumps are designated with a HP and then a number, and then there's also some that are HP with an E on it, and then there's, I think, one with an HP and a hashtag, all right? And so the differences are the, the hashtag unit is just a recirculation unit. The HPEs, those have actually modulating economizers, so they'll have an outside air and ample, and they'll, they can open, open and close, and those are, I think, just in their IT closets. And then the HP1 and HP2 designates which makeup air unit they are uh, serviced by as far as the primary air, okay? So every single one of the heat pumps has a compressor in it, and it has a water loop that goes to it from the plant here. Okay, um, pumps one and two, they pump the building water out to all of the HPs. Now the HPs, they will run their compressor to heat and to cool. So whether the system's in a heating in the middle of winter or it's cooling in the middle of summer, those um, heat pumps are running their compressor. And they're either putting heat back into the water or they're putting cold into the water, depending on which mode it's in. When they're heating, then the water that's going through them is getting colder. When they're cooling, the water that's going through them is getting warmer. Then that water comes back here, and this system in this room decides, okay, do we need to shed heat or do we need to add heat? So like in the, uh, in the middle of winter, when most of your system is going to be heating, then uh, the water is going to want to be cold. So what's going to happen is, is this system is then going to inject some boiler water into it to get it, uh, to get it back up to temperature. Whereas in the summertime, when most of your system is cooling, that water is going to get hot, and then it's going to get sent out to, the, uh, out to your ground loop, and it's going to get cool. Okay, does that make sense? What temperature does the boiler take in? Well, for the most part, the water is going to be in around 70 degrees, 60 to 70 degrees is really is really where you want to keep it. So, in the uh, uh, there are separate heating and cooling set points, and we'll go over those once we get to the, the graphic. But basically, once the uh, once the water temperature starts going down below 65, 60 degrees, then you're going to start seeing the boiler system try to heat that water up. And then once you start going above 70, 75 degrees, you're going to see the, the ground loop um, be active and get the water cooled back up. So I thought the boiler was just the backup and we were using ground loop for heat as well. Well, it, it is. It is. You're, you're right. But you're going to see you're going to see that boiler actually running during the, during the winter as well. Very below it, right? It, it'll, yeah, you'll, you'll be using the boiler as well. So. Yeah, so that the ground loop isn't just for cooling, but it is, um, it, you know, it'll, it'll supplement on the heating side as well, but you're, you're going to find that you're going to be using that oil, right? I know, I know we've been watching it run pretty much even during a cool morning. So. so anyway, so in here, you've got your, your pumps, the primary pumps, the BFD is actually on this wall, P1 and P2. And those are the those are the guys that are actually supplying uh, the water out to all of the heat pumps. So the build the building um, system is is getting uh, is getting from uh, pump one, pump two. So you'll either see um, one running, two running, or both running, just depending depending on demand. I think I think that in the logic it basically says if the primary pump is above I think ninety percent. For an X amount of minutes, and it'll bring on the, the uh, standby pump or the lag pump. If there's a failure, obviously it'll switch over. Um, all of the VFDs, these Grunfoss style, you see that they've got these um, little, little black boxes underneath them, and those are uh, their back neck communication cards. So essentially, we're able to pull information out of these VFDs through the uh, back neck communication. However, these don't really need to be there. If they're not communicating, the VFDs will still run and do what they need to do. They have an actual hardwire interface as well. So these are really there just so that we can pull voltages and faults out of them. But if, if, 
this, for whatever reason, dies on you, or you know, you notice that hey, this one doesn't have a green blinky light on it, um, it's still not going to prevent the VFD from working as far as controls go. If there's something wrong with the VFD, obviously, then, um, then there's, a, there's another problem. But you'll, you'll notice that even the, uh, the pumps over on that side, you'll see these little black boxes, even though some of the pumps are up high, and so are the VFDs. The disconnect obviously shut down, um, shut down everything. Um, on the, uh, the pumps themselves, if you guys are if you guys are doing maintenance on the pumps and so forth, you always want to hit it at the at the disconnect. Don't trust just turning off the VFD. Um, and, uh, start on that. Um, other than that, this this here that's the main uh, control panel in the uh, in the building. This is where the Jace is. So the JACE is essentially what serves up all the information to your graphics and that you guys are going to be that you guys are going to be looking at. Um, you can see there's also a couple of snowmelt controllers um, off to the right, the Tech Mars, and these snowmelt controllers. We have a little bit of an interlock with them. They essentially give us a call for which side, um, you know, east or west, and then we turn on the pump and allow the heat exchanger to. To send water out to the zones. So, what tells the snow snow melt to turn on? Okay. It's a combination of an outside air sensor and a slab sensor. So, you've got like one of those round <laughs> slab sensors out in the spaces. And, uh, the combination of outside air temperature and moisture and the slab um, is essentially what makes that decision. And that, that all happens to be parameters inside the tech model. I'm sure you guys probably have a few of them. Nope. No? Uh, is there a way we can either manually run them or manually turn them off? You can, you can manually turn on the pump to send out. However, um, these guys typically have a valve control to where the tech model controller will open and close the valve that it needs for its zones. Okay. So yeah, so without without actually looking a little bit more in depth in the, uh, uh, you know, on how those are actually wired, if they have the valves, then no, you can't force water out. Okay. But if if they do, uh, if they actually don't have valves on them, if they're just using them to trigger a call, then um, then yes, then you can you can manual some uh, a pump and and just send. Uh, water out to the slabs. John, Tom, Tom will be here tomorrow. He knows those pretty well, so he can go over that with you, too. Okay. I was just curious, another thing I was curious about is, I know they have a uh, setting where if it's too cold to snow, kind of thing, um, do we know what temperature that's set at? I, I don't. I, I don't, I'm not so sure, or I don't know who physically set those up. <laughs> They're probably set on a fish factory, or, okay. Yeah, then the, uh, the sensor, you know, as soon as that dries, when it senses moisture, yeah. it'll come on. Okay. And then as soon as that dries up, it'll shut off. It shuts off. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yep. And then as long as there's not a call from one of those guys, then the Honeywell system will then shut off the, the pumps if it doesn't need it, you know, just, just to say that. Okay. Yeah, there's a, there's a little flat plate or a little plate and frame heat exchanger up on the wall up there. And so the you know the hot water is on this side, and then the on the other side would be the water that goes up to your slab. Okay. Just, yeah. I just got a question. You guys already answered it. Then you said you can work with moisture and temperature. A lot of all involved in that. Yeah, but they they have a proprietary what they call a slab sensor. So it's like a little uh, silver brass sensor that that is actually in the. Uh, in the concrete slab outside, and that sensor uh, measures, I think it's conductivity, temperature, and I mean it has about five or six wires that go to it, so, and, and you know, they're pretty secretive about what it is. We tried actually interfacing it once with our own love, but it didn't go too well. So, so temperature, moisture, right? Yeah, yeah temperature, 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 moisture, okay. and then, then they also have an outdoor air temperature, so, you know, they can have a master lockout, but then also look at your slap sensor. And, um, typically, they also have a, a, a pretty long delay uh, built into them. Uh, most of the defaults that I've seen are about four hours, to where when it calls, 
then when it stops calling, it still stays on four hours active. And usually a lot of that is adjustable through the, um, you know, through the blue boxes there. I'm not sure, but I think right now the, the temperature's on there right now. Is that the slab temperature right there? The sensor, probably the sensor yeah, temperature is 64, 60. Got, yeah, this is, this is an outdoor. Yeah, and then, outdoor. Uh, Should be able to get slab temperature up there too in the sensor. Yeah, there's some settings in here. Slab temperature was 60 and outdoor is 64. So yeah. they've got they've got a little on it. Yeah. Yeah, and and like I said, the, there are parameters in there to where you can um, you know you can let it know what you want your slab temperature to be and, um, and what kind of delays you need and something Back it up, back to the geothermal. Um, when we were designing this, there was a lot. We kept having this conversation about not running, <coughs> not putting boiler water, boiler heat into the ground. So P7 won't run if the boiler is running. Do we have that in lock? I believe so. I, th I think that that's in the sequence. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so it, that, well, that, that loop is a separate loop. I think it's P4, which is... The P7, maybe the P7, um, that that actually sends the uh, the water out into the loop, okay. and so you you've got a, a primary loop which essentially which essentially loops through here and goes out to your space, and then yeah. you have the boiler loop feeding into it, and then the, yeah. the ground loop yeah. also. And, I, and I've got it pretty well depicted on the graphic, okay. so it will make a little bit more sense. Okay, we'll look at the ground. Okay. Yeah. The makeup air unit there behind you, um, it, its primary focus is essentially to provide fresh air out to your heat pumps. Now, some of the heat pumps have uh, CO2 sensors, and the ones that have CO2... Solely until it just couldn't hang. Yeah. And if you kill that and you run the boiler, and then you keep trying the ground loop every now and then, and they never work together, you know, and that was what I understood, but maybe... Yeah, this this side, the boiler lives on on the building side. Yeah. Like your source side on that side, and your loop side on your building loop on this okay. side. So, and your boiler's tied into your loop, your building loop. Because I mean, the point is, we all want to run the boiler like we want to run it as little as possible, right? You know, even if we're on the razor's edge. And, <laughs> and then being that the geo is set at a lower temperature, yeah, you know, then basically the heat pumps they work on the backward side, so basically that helps for heating yeah. to the building. Right. And I think a lot of times what you guys are going to see is that the pumps that are heating are going to counteract the pumps that are cooling. Yeah. And so they're all going to be kind of helping each other, you know. Yeah. I was watching that this week. I mean, we're kind of in a shoulder season, but yeah, it, it really was just moving heat around the building. It wasn't ever. Cool. Really cool. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, make, make up air units. So this guy's... Uh, the, the job of these guys is essentially just to get fresh air out to the spaces. So there are two different types of heat pumps. We've got ones that just have a, a locked damper position for the makeup air. And so they're always going to be bringing in X amount of CFF. Then you have the CO2 units, which actually have a little honeywell CO2 sensor. I think the majority of them are down in the space. There are, I think, three units that are up in the returns. And um, basically, the set point of a thousand parts per million on those is going to open up the damper more to provide more air from uh, from the makeup air unit. The makeup air unit has a uh, has a, a heat wheel in it or a heat exchanger, which allows 100% um, outside air all the time, and the air that is leaving will. Uh, will essentially be used to preheat or pre-cool the outside air temperature coming in. Okay, so, and again, you guys will, I'm sure you guys are familiar with those. Yeah, we got those wheels. Yeah. So just for you guys, a little background, the, the public spaces, like the courtrooms, they have the CO2 dampers. So the idea is we don't over-ventilate those rooms and they're not being used. So if we're in occupied mode, but there's nobody in there, so there's no need to ventilate that space in this hole. So then the CO2 sensor, once it fills up, will start recognizing all those people in there breathing, and it'll 
trip that and the damper will open up and just start ventilating at a higher rate. So it's just an energy efficiency thing to not ventilate those rooms when they're empty. And you might get some alarms on that too. I mean, once while on CO two, you'll get an alarm. Yeah, that gets low. Yeah. Okay. So you'll you'll get some alarms. There'll be a lot. You, know, you have to look at the computer, but you'll see your levels are low until that builds back up. It's yeah. Like sure. Okay. Yeah, the, these guys, even though they have BFDs in them, they are they are set up constant volume um, at this time. So I know the original sequence. I think they were going to be modulated, but. Um, for whatever reason, they're a constant volume. Um, we do have uh, pressure sensors on the return duct and on the supply duct, and they, they're they're extremely low pressure. I mean, out in the spaces, you know, they're three quarters of the way down duct, and you know, we're we're just barely even, um, you know, getting a getting a reading on the sensors themselves. So they're just very low pressure. Um, other than that, the Sally port. Um, it, this one's kind of special just because this unit is here. Whenever this unit runs, there's an exhaust fan over on the sally port that is interlocked with it. And then um, and then the, there's a BFD in there that modulates pressure. So that's just special just for the sally port. But. So the exhaust comes out of this into the sally port. It goes out. It goes out. So yeah. it's kind of another way of heating the sally port with the exhaust there. Yeah. Yep. Is there... Is there a CO sensor or CO2 sensor on that um, in the Sally port? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, no, right. right. There's not, yeah, there's nothing in there. Oh, okay. You, usually there are CO sensors in the, in the Sally ports, you know, that we've done. Um, but this one, I, I just think it's not big enough. Um, plus, it's always getting air from the building, so. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if there's anything else in here that. Uh, but we need to cover. Um, I think I think everything as far as the pump layout, um, it'll be pretty clear on the graphic as far as what you guys will be seeing. Uh, you got any questions before we go to the graphic? Now that exhaust fan is interlocked with this unit, you said? The, the big exhaust fan that's actually in there. Yeah, there's, there's a little guy right here. This one is just for in here. Um, so but there's a temperature sensor right behind you. And, Somebody leaves a vehicle running in there or something like that. Doesn't set sound. No. What turns on the running here? Thermostat. Thermostat. Just yeah. temperature right behind temperature you. Temperature rise. Yeah, it should come on on temperature rise, doesn't it? Yeah. There's a there's a sensor right behind you there on that wall, and um, it's, there's just a, a set point. I don't know what it is. Seventy five eighty degrees. Good. Like I was trying to do there is if it gets warm in here. To circulate that area that I need. Okay. Yeah, I think we've got we've got a couple of uh, points that go to your uh, building feed, so that we're monitoring Kate Elio of this building. Um, but other than that, that's about it in here. Okay. The the networks um, all come from the Jace, so the Jace is communicating with all the heat pumps. The heat pumps all have factory controllers on them. Um, what you guys are going to find is sending set points to them is a little slow, um, but it doesn't matter if that's the only heat pump you're talking to or if there's a hundred of them. It'll take about anywhere between a minute to two minutes. I've seen before that'll take a set point. Okay. So just just note that. Station. But yeah, but other than that, as far as temperatures, alarms, you know, that seems to be pretty good as far as feedback from them. When you're trying to write to them, they just don't don't want to take it for a second. Or two more okay. Upstairs? Yes. Yeah.